This is an 82 millimeter UV filter that was mounted on the front of a Nikon 24-70 2.8 lens. How did this happen? That's how it happened. A baseball hit the filter. A lot better the filter than the front element of the lens. So stay tuned and I'll explain what happened and I'll explain why you should always put a filter on the front of your lens. Hi, today I want to talk to you about something that is very important. Recently, I was photographing a charity event at Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia and primarily I was using my D500 with the 70 to 200 millimeter lens to photograph people trying to hit a home run. I also had my Z6 with the 24 to 70 2.8 zoom lens and I had it sitting on the ground behind me. I was positioned at the pitcher's mound photographing each batter as they came up trying to hit the ball. And I was primarily using the Z6 to take some other shots primarily to photograph the various people operating the pitching machine. I had the camera on the ground behind me and I went to pick it up to take a picture of one of the pitchers and looking through the viewfinder it was all cloudy. In fact I couldn't see anything it just looked like I was in a big cloud. I looked at the front of the lens and fortunately I had a filter on and the filter was completely shattered. How it happened, I don't know. Now people would be throwing the balls back in as they were hit and they would just kind of roll up towards the pitcher's mound. I'm assuming one of those balls hit the filter. But imagine if I didn't have that filter on the lens. A $2,000 plus lens would have been destroyed. I don't know what it would cost to replace a front element, but I am sure it is very expensive. So what I did, I unscrewed the filter and dropped it into my camera bag. And as I did, all the glass fell out. It completely shattered. Now, when I got home, I just scooped out all the broken glass from my camera bag, placed the filter frame on a piece of black paper and just put the glass in there so you could see how bad this was. And um, I, I couldn't believe it. And I was very fortunate that there was no damage to the front element of the lens. Now, years ago, many years ago, I had my Nikromat FTN on my shoulder with my 105 2.5. And of course, I had a filter mounted on that. In fact, I've always, as soon as I buy a lens, I put a UV or clear filter on it. And the main purpose of that is to protect the lens. So in two cases, over the last 50 years, it has saved my lens. Now, the, one of, the filter on the 105 was just a crack, whereas this one was completely shattered. Filters range greatly in price, and I highly recommend that you put one on your lens. And one of the questions is, does that filter degrade image quality? I suppose a cheap filter can. Honestly, I've never noticed it. And I looked up at B&H before doing this video on the price of 82 millimeter filters, because that's what the 24 to 70 takes. And they range in price from $8 up to about $150. So what's the difference? Well, it's the mount. Some are aluminum, some are brass. It's the thickness of the filter. Thinner filters for use on a wide-angle lens are better, less chance of vignetting. Um, it's the glass itself, the quality of the glass. Is it multi-coated? Some of them have this fluorine coating to repel fingerprints and various chemicals or even water. They're easier to keep clean. So the price varies greatly. And I've used 
filters and all different prices. And I really haven't, I've never done a test. I've never mounted a cheap filter and then an expensive filter and shot in various conditions to see if there's a difference. I'm sure there may be a little difference. Uh, most likely I would think flare might be more apparent with a cheaper filter, especially if it's not multi-coated. But I've never tested it, so I honestly don't know. But isn't it better to lose a 20, a 50, a hundred dollar filter rather than having the front element of your lens destroyed? So anytime I buy a new lens, I order a filter as well and put it right on the lens as soon as I take the lens out of its package. I may do a video in the future with various quality filters, seeing if there is a difference. The thing is, it would have to be shot in a lot of different situations. It's shot into the sun, in various lighting conditions, indoors. So, um, but maybe I'll get around to doing that in the future. And another thing, if I shoot that event next year, uh, of course I'll have a filter on my lenses but uh, I won't leave a camera sitting on the ground. That wasn't too bright. And it, I should have put it into the camera bag or just kept it on my shoulder and uh, it would have been less likely that that would have happened. Now, back in the day with the 105 on the Nikromat, I had the camera over my shoulder and I think it bumped into the corner of a table, if I remember correctly. But again, that filter didn't shatter. It just had a crack, right, a diagonal crack right through the center of it. So for peace of mind, to protect your lens, even if it's an inexpensive lens, and usually the filter is going to be a lot less expensive than the lens. Just pick one up, screw it into the front of your lens, and now you don't have to worry about the front, front element being damaged. And don't leave your camera sitting on the ground. Okay, so that's it for this video. I usually come out with a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. And uh, in the near future, I'm going to start publishing probably two videos a week. And I'm still waiting on my Nikon Z8 to be delivered. And when I do, I will do a bunch of videos on that, including what will be my first unboxing video. So stay tuned for that. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I will talk to you next time.